Hey everyone, I'm Trevor Green, and today, because it is the spookiest of months, uh, we are going to be talking about horror game design. Now, even if you don't plan on working on a horror project, it can be important to know the ins and outs uh, in case you have that moment where your scene needs that little pinch of thriller tension. Now, the big question, how do you make a game scary? The answer is a bit more complicated than taping a scary face to a stick and waving it in front of the player. Now, the process for creating an effective scare is similar to telling a successful joke. Yes, add skeletons. That will usually do it, but we're going, we're going deeper than that. Uh, but yeah, just like telling a successful joke, you need a setup, a turn on that setup, and of course, the punchline. So let's unpack that analogy. The setup, or in terms of horror, the atmosphere. But atmosphere doesn't just mean you have to make your place spooky. You could make a bright and colorful game viscerally terrifying. The key factor here is immersion. If your player is not immersed, it will be a lot harder for your scares to consistently deliver. You can also increase atmosphere by using your locations to disempower the player adding tight corridors or looming structures or limiting the player's movement can make them feel more vulnerable which can when combined with immersion can increase your atmosphere like the first FNAF game as memeable as the franchise is was a great execution of horror because you could not move from the starting area it created a very tense atmosphere where you felt very vulnerable yeah, and the, and the VR game definitely does really increase the fear factor of the original. And Amnesia, even though the game is entirely scripted, on your first playthrough, it'll still feel viscerally terrifying because everything comes together to create a very disempowering experience. Now, a turn on the setup, or in terms of horror unpredictability. If a player can pick up a guide, follow it one-to-one, -one, and beat your game without any hitches, the game is not going to be very scary. Good horror games always have some element of randomness. Of course, this doesn't just mean throwing jump scares at the player at random intervals. No, randomness works best in horror games when it works behind the scenes. Like, think of Five Nights at Freddy's, where the animatronics move on a percent chance, causing the animatronics to synchronize and desynchronize at random, creating situations where the player needs to be prepared to face any number of potential enemies at any time. One of my favorite examples of randomness and horror, Cage actually mentioned earlier, uh, is Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia is a multiplayer horror title where you enter a haunted location and try to find evidence of a ghost. Uh, in Phasmophobia, the ghost is only defined by two rules. It can't leave the location, and it can only kill you if it catches you while the lights are flickering. Every other aspect of the ghost's behavior is completely unpredictable and random. Which leaves the game feeling unpredictable, yet fair. Uh, you can also add to unpredictability by creating perceived threats. Sounds can be used to great effect for this by creating moments where the player has to ask themselves if what they're hearing or seeing is an actual threat or just a red herring or an environmental sound. Now, the moment that creates all the YouTube funny moment montages, the punchline, or in terms of horror, the moment where you see or hear the big scary thing. Now, just like a joke with no setup, a scare with no buildup will not provide as great a scare. You should give time for the other elements of the game to build tension in the player. Think of one of the most iconic moments in Amnesia, uh, the grunt in storage. After seeing the monsters early in the game and creeping around through this dark maze of boxes and barrels, you open a seemingly inconsequential door only to be greeted by a deep moan as the creature had been lying in wait there and rushes out of the room. 
And this moment hits so well because at this point you haven't had a real face-to-face -face encounter with the monster. And up until this point, the game has encouraged the player to explore, to find more lantern oil and tinderboxes. The player has up until this point felt generally safe walking into new rooms, so having a monster appear and scare players who over-search not only provides the immediate scare, but also makes the player picture the same moment every time they enter a new place. Even though this moment doesn't actually really reoccur through the rest of the game. And scares don't need to be all pop out, big pop out of the screen moments. Scares can be much more subtle and still be terrifying. PT is an excellent example of a game with subtle scares. After walking through this house several times and finally rounding the corner and just seeing the ghost standing there. Even though that on paper doesn't really sound scary, it still manages to be one of the scariest moments in gaming. Even though these two scares are so greatly different in delivery, what do you think they have in common? Well, yeah, it isn't expected in the moment, but there is another aspect that they both have in common, and that is they both make the player afraid of future moments in the game. And that's one of the most important things scares are used for. Scares can be built on top of each other. A good horror game uses its past scares to build tension for their next scares. But this is also why building tension to start with is so crucial. If you take either of those moments and take away all the buildup, sure, those scares will be startling in the moment, but they won't leave the player wincing at the thought of entering the next room or walking around the next corridor. But ultimately, I want your takeaway to be this. Horror is not a monolith. There is no foolproof strategy to make a game scary, and your game won't be scary to everyone, nor should it try to be. You should try to find the method that works for your game. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching.